So here we go again with Reliving the War, the show where we go back in time to compare weekly episodes of WWF Raw and WCW Nitro. We are now at October 16th, 1995, the sixth time Raw and Nitro went head to head. WCW is in the lead in the scoring system I've been using with three points. Raw has one point and we have had one tie. What I do here is play both shows at the same time and award a point at whatever show or segment that I felt was more entertaining. The end goal is to cover every single Monday Night Ratings battle and find out which show was really the best. A quick announcement before we begin. Reliving the War is now available on all major podcasting platforms as an audio-only show. I thought this would be a good idea for those who maybe want to listen to the show in the car or at work, and also there will be bonus episodes uploaded to the podcast to supplement the weekly show here on YouTube. There's already a bonus episode available right now, so check it out when you have the time. Finally, you'd be doing me a huge favour by giving the podcast a favourable rating on whatever platform you listen to. If you could do that for me, I'd be super grateful. Okay, here we go then, October 16th, 1995. Raw is still presenting matches from the Grand Rapids tapings, whereas Nitro is live in Albany, Georgia. The WWF will present In Your House 4 later in the week, so Raw is a go-home show here where the World Wrestling Federation will try to sell as many pay-per-views as possible with this Raw broadcast. WCW will present Halloween Havoc in two weeks' time. We have four matches on each show, so comparing each broadcast should be straightforward enough this week. On Nitro, WCW will present DDP vs Johnny B. Bad to start things off, and over on Raw, we have Hunter Hearst Helmsley vs Doink. Let's start with the WWF then. The broadcast kicks off with a hype video, getting fans prepared for the Steel Cage main event featuring Bret Hart taking on Isaac Yankum. We go to the arena, Hunter Hearst Helmsley is ready for action as Vince McMahon reminds us that Jerry Lawler will be locked inside his own personal cage if he interferes in the Hart vs Yankum match later in the evening. Ray Apollo's Doink makes his way to the ring, one of the weaker versions of Doink when compared to Matt Osborne's portrayal of the character, but still, let's give this a chance. The match starts off with Doink doing the usual comedy stuff while Triple H gets increasingly frustrated. Vince McMahon tells us on commentary that Undertaker suffered a crushed face thanks to Mabel and Yokozuna's attack last week, and Jerry Lawler is also talking about an incident involving Shawn Michaels and a nightclub in Syracuse but Vince tells Lawler that the Shawn Michaels story will be revealed later in the show. In the ring, Triple H quickly puts a stop to doing shenanigans, and things turn rather dull and mediocre. Nothing at all interesting happens as Hunter gets the upper hand. Doink tries to mount some offence, but he's quickly stopped by Triple H. The match ends around the 4 minute mark with a pedigree. Really, nothing more to say. This would be Doink's final match of this era. The character was retired after this episode of Raw, and while Doink would show up sporadically every now and then, Doink was no longer featured as an active superstar after this very match. It was for the best, Matt Osborne's portrayal of the character was impossible to replace with good results. We see Barry Horowitz try to teach Hakushi about baseball before Raw transitions into its second match. So let's flip over to Nitro to see how things started off with WCW. The first thing I noticed here with Nitro was just how good the arena looked. The floor lighting in particular looked great and the company done well to make the Albany Civic Center look as good as it could be. Bobby Heenan tells us that Ric Flair found a partner for tonight's main event. Sting will team up with the Nature Boy to take on Arn Anderson and Brian Pillman on this episode of Nitro. We are shown clips from WCW Pro where the Stinger and Ric Flair got together to form this temporary alliance. 
Sting warns Flair not to double cross him, so the story going into tonight's main event is all about this newfound relationship between the nature boy and the man called Sting. Good stuff, no complaints, I'm excited for the main event. We are ready for our first match as Diamond Dallas Page and his Diamond Doll Kimberly make their way down to the ring. Out comes Johnny B. Bad to a great ovation from the audience, he throws his frisbees and all seems normal. I sit back to get ready to watch this match and it's over before it even gets started. DDP attacks Johnny with the television title and the match is thrown out. DDP vs Johnny B Bad is also booked for Halloween Havoc 1995 here so this was used to build up that match but still it's an advertised match on Nitro. Johnny B Bad is declared the winner via disqualification and yeah that's how Nitro started. An easy point for Raw then. Helmsley vs Doink was extremely mediocre but at least they actually wrestled. We have the WCW Nitro debut of Chris Benoit next as he takes on Eddie Guerrero while the WWF gives us the USWA Tag Champions PG-13 taking on WWF Tag Team Champions The Smoking Guns. Vince McMahon announces that The Smoking Guns are putting the WWF Tag Titles on the line and early in the match, Gorilla Monsoon appears on the screen to let us know that Yokozuna will now face Mabel at In Your House 4 due to The Undertaker's injury. Gorilla trying to get the last laugh here by putting the two giants who attack Taker against each other. The tag match gets underway with Wolfie D and Billy Gunn starting things off and the first thing that catches your attention here is just how big the smoking guns are compared to PG-13. Billy and Bart were two big dudes and compared to PG-13 here they were gigantic. Vince McMahon asks Jerry Lawler why are they named PG-13 and Jerry Lawler says it's because their moms still have to take them to the movies. Great line here. The USWA tag team champions done well when it comes to working as a heel tag team getting sneaky attacks into the smoking guns behind the referee's back and whatnot, but it always seemed they never really had a chance here. The smoking guns would consistently overpower their opponents. Things slowed down a bit and PG-13 were able to keep Billy Gunn from making a tag, but you know how this one ends. Billy eventually tags in Bart and the smoking guns win the match. This wasn't great. PG-13 looked like lesser superstars against the smoking guns and this isn't just because of their size, but it's just how the match was booked here. Judging by the lack of noise when Bart Gunn got the hot tag, even the audience knew how predictable this all was. It's cool that there's this unique champions vs champions match on Raw, but really, that's all this one had going for it. After the match, Vince McMahon announces that Alundra Blaze will battle WWF Women's Champion Bertha Faye next week on Raw. Over on Nitro we have Chris Benoit vs Eddie Guerrero and I already know Nitro is winning this point. I've seen this match quite a few times and it's very, very good. Now it isn't perfect, there are a few little mistakes in the early moments of the match but all in all this is an excellent match and one of the best matches so far on this Reliving the War series. Chris Benoit and Eddie Guerrero would continue to evolve their match over the years. This certainly isn't the best Guerrero vs Benoit showdown but it says a lot when this this one right here is still extremely good. Eddie hurts himself when he hits the ring post and Benoit zones in on Guerrero's arm. The match is all about Eddie trying to protect himself while Benoit tries a bunch of unique ways to get at the injured body part. Along with this you have the fast, high flying and technical wrestling that you'd expect from Guerrero and Benoit. And remember this is Chris's Nitro debut here and really this was the first time many fans were exposed to Chris Benoit. Anyway Benoit's offense was snappy and impactful. Eddie Guerrero done a great job of selling the arm, never forgetting to show he was in pain even when he was on the offense. Benoit had a devastating powerbomb on Eddie that caused Eddie's head to snap back and forth. It looked absolutely brutal but it was all totally controlled. Chris ends up getting the win with a full Nelson suplex, an extremely good match here and a point for Nitro. We are drawn up then at a point each. Eric Bischoff announces after the match that the WCW committee are considering introducing a cruiserweight division within the company, one of the absolute best moves WCW could have done and something that would help them put on more entertaining Monday night wrestling shows down the line. 
We have a little bit of promo time now on both shows. Over on Raw, we get a clip from a WWF Tour de Force show where Jim Cornette and Davey Boy Smith are being interviewed by Doc Hendricks. It's Jim Cornette doing what he does best here, but admittedly, it's very much the same as last week's Raw promo. Jim talks about the Bulldog never getting a fair shot at the WWF Championship, and at In Your House 4, Davey will finally become the champion when he defeats Diesel. We then go over to a pre-recorded segment featuring Ahmed Johnson. Ahmed had not made his televised in-ring debut yet, so these promos were used to build some hype. Ahmed was talking about honour here, saying he honoured his mother by doing well in school after she bought him a ticket to a wrestling show. I'm not kidding. I know the WWF were trying to give Ahmed a sort of do the right thing attitude here, but Ahmed's promo delivery right from the get-go was never great. Flipping over to Nitro, the Giant and the Taskmaster come to the ring to address Hogan. Sullivan explained that the Dungeon of Doom removed Hulk Hogan's moustache as a way to strip the Hulkster of his identity, and it worked. A week later, Hulk Hogan had given up the red and yellow and succumbed to the darkness. I can't believe WCW had gotten three weeks of TV out of Hulk Hogan's moustache, but anyway, the giant talks about destroying Hulkamania at Halloween Havoc. It was all by the numbers here, nothing exciting and nothing new. I'm giving the point to Nitro simply because it wasn't taped or pre-recorded footage. I would have liked to give Jim Cornette the point here, but the promo was pretty much a carbon copy of last week's Raw. And this isn't Cornette's fault after all, the footage used here was from a Tour de Force show from the week prior, but still, it was just too similar in content to last week. The Ahmed Johnson stuff sucked to be honest, so yeah, the Dungeon of Doom kinda get the point here by default. Something I just want to point out is this lady with the binoculars during the Dungeon of Doom promo. Surely she isn't that far away. Did she need to get a closer look at the giant or something? I don't know, I just found her amusing and also a little distracting. WWF Raw's next match is Dean Douglas vs Joe Dorgan, while over on Nitro we have Hacksaw Jim Duggan taking on Meng. Disco Inferno's music plays once again as the disco dancing fool is at the entranceway showing us his best moves. Will the Disco Inferno interfere in this match the same way he disrupted the Road Warrior Hawk vs Big Bubba match last week? Well, let's find out. Jim Duggan gets a decent pop as he makes his way down to the ring, but things go downhill from here. The match is only around 2 minutes long but Jim Duggan spends a good amount of this time pandering to the audience. And I know this was kind of Jim Duggan's thing during this point of his career, but still, this kind of thing hasn't really aged well, and even in 1995, I'm not sure wrestling enthusiasts really wanted to see this kind of stuff. I'm not having a go at Jim Duggan either, the guy was popular at one point and he still managed to get booked even into the mid to late 90s, but looking back here, his matches really weren't competitive at this point. Meng gets the win with his patented spike, a poor match here and no sight of Disco Inferno. On Raw then, we should expect Dean Douglas to make quick work of Joe Dorgan, who Impact fans will know today as Johnny Swinger. This was Johnny's first WWF match here. He only had three matches in the World Wrestling Federation in 1995 and all his matches were losses. So yeah, what you get here is another quick two minute match. Vince McMahon announces that Shawn Michaels was, and I quote, pulled from a car outside a Syracuse nightclub by 10 men and battered in the face. Vince then said that Sean lost consciousness but the men decided to continue attacking the heartbreak kid, going as far as to ramming his head into a car. Vince fluffing up the story in tremendous fashion here, but I get it too. Get HBK some sympathy, make him an even bigger babyface. Turn a negative into a positive. Sean calls into Monday Night Raw saying he doesn't look good and he doesn't feel good, but he will be at In Your House later in the week. This whole phone call completely overshadows the Dean Douglas match. I had to watch this twice just to switch my focus onto the bout, but still, it wasn't great. It was a squash match, and saying that it was still better than Duggan vs Mang. Another point for Raw then, but neither match was exactly captivating here. 
More promos up next and it's all pre-recorded stuff. Over on Raw, Doc Hendricks tries to sell us a Two Dudes with Attitude shirt before we go over to Goldust. Goldust will be facing Marty Jannetty at In Your House 4 in his in-ring television debut, so there was a lot of mistake around the Goldust character around this time. To be fair, Goldust doesn't say very much here, simply telling Marty that the former rocker will never forget the name of Goldust. Following the Goldust promo, we have Paul Bearer giving us an update on The Undertaker. Paul Paul says that The Undertaker may never look the same again, but the dead man will return to go after Mabel and Yokozuna. Vince McMahon runs down the matches that we're going to see at In Your House 4, and we see WWF staff setting up the steel cage for tonight's WWF Raw main event. Over on Nitro, the man without a moustache, Hulk Hogan, cuts a promo, and man, this one is insane. Not only does Hogan refer to his Halloween Havoc opponent as the big stinky giant, but Hogan also says that the power of Hulkamania is strong enough to stop an elephant in its tracks. Hogan then says that what he done to the giant's father in 1987 will be nothing compared to what happens at Halloween Havoc. Keep an eye on Jimmy Hart throughout this entire promo, he looks like he has soiled himself and he looks legitimately out of breath from all of this Hulk Hogan insanity. I've no idea what Hulk Hogan was playing at here, it's like he wanted to try this new dark character but just like last week, he keeps slipping back into the Hulk Hogan of old and what we end up with is just sheer confusion. Still, this blew the gold dust and Paul Bear promos right out of the water. It was absolutely nuts, but still entertaining. A well-deserved point for Monday Nitro. Main event time, over on Nitro we have Flair and Sting versus Arn Anderson and Brian Pullman, and on Raw we have the Hitman Bret Hart taking on Isaac Yankum. The cage match starts off with Yankum attacking the Hitman, but quite quickly, Brett is able to turn the tides. This is quite refreshing, you're kind of expecting Brett to take a beating throughout the early moments of the match, but things are kept quite even. Brett tries to escape via the cage door, but the referee can't open the lock, and in a great little twist, it turns out that Jerry Lawler changed the locks before the match. Brett eventually gets the sharpshooter locked in, and when the hitman tries to escape the cage afterwards, Jerry Lawler interfered, knocking Brett back into the steel structure. Gorilla Monsoon then comes down the ringside, and Jerry Lawler is forced into his own personal shark cage. The shark cage is raised above the ring, Jerry Lawler screams and shouts, and our cage match continues. Isaac Yankum gets the upper hand in the ring, the king starts freaking out so much in his cage that he gets a nosebleed, Brett starts fighting back and admittedly, the Jerry Lawler stuff is somewhat distracting throughout the last portion of the match. Isaac hits his DDS DDT and Jerry Lawler throws the lock key into the ring. Isaac Yankum tries to open the cage door but Brett is there to make sure Isaac doesn't escape. Brett throws the key into the audience and after delivering an elbow from the middle turnbuckle, Brett is able to escape the cage and win the match. It's quite an uneventful way to end a cage match if I'm honest, but still, this one was pretty good. It wasn't a classic WWF steel cage match by any stretch of the imagination, but for a televised cage match, it was good. The show goes off the air with Jerry Lawler still stuck in the cage as fans begin leaving the arena. Vince tells us to join the WWF or in your house later in the week, and Raw is off the air. So WCW has their work cut out for them here, but Nitro has a star studded main event, so let's see how well they done here. Ric Flair comes to the ring alone, there's no sign of the stinger, and the commentary team thinks Sting maybe had a change of heart when it comes to tagging with his old arch nemesis Ric Flair. The bout starts as a two on one match then, Flair and Pillman start chopping each other and the sheer power of Ric Flair's knife edge chops were enough to send the referee to the floor, amazing stuff. The Nature Boy does well to keep Pillman and Anderson under control, Flair seems to have no issues taking on two men here as he struts and shouts between moves, even taking the fight to the outside of the ring and making things look rather easy. It makes you wonder why Flair even wanted Sting to tag with him in the first place, but still, when Flair falls victim to a double A spinebuster, the audience goes nuts as Sting makes his way to the ring. Flair then takes a beating from Pillman and Anderson, and the crowd becomes unglued when the Nature Boy goes to make the hot tag. Sting's popularity 
Hardy was truly something else. WCW fans totally loved this man. Sting gets tagged in and he goes to town on his opponents, running from corner to corner delivering stinger splashes as the crowd in attendance goes absolutely wild. Sting manages to get both Arn Anderson and Pillman out of the ring and the match ends in a countout. A seriously underwhelming and unfulfilling finish to a match that was red hot from the get go. Sting and Ric Flair cut a promo afterwards with Mean Gene Ogerland and it's announced that Flair and Sting will take on Brian Pullman and Arn Anderson once again at Halloween Havoc. And I know the count out finish here was to bait people into buying the pay per view to see who the real winner would be but it's a shame that WCW took the easy way out here when they had a golden opportunity to give fans a bit more for their money. So with that in mind it's hard to decide who gets the final point. Hart vs Yankum was maybe just okay but the finish gave closure. There was nothing wrong with this steel cage match really when it comes down to it. And the WCW tag match was seriously exciting throughout but the finish left you feeling a little cheated. I'm going to split it and give points to both Raw and Nitro here. Two decent main events that had pros and cons. Ok so let's see how I scored this thing. Doink vs Hunter Hearst Hemsley gets the first point, DDP vs Johnny B. Bad unfortunately didn't even get started. Benoit and Guerrero blew the WWF tag team match out of the water, a real hard hitting match that showcased what Chris Benoit was all about. WCW gets the second point. Nitro got another point for the Dungeon of Doom promo, kinda by default. And then Raw secured a point for the Dean Douglas match. Hulk Hogan's wacky promo was entertaining in a strange way and it was also much better than the Goldust and Paul Bearer promos, so that's a point for Nitro. Finally, the main events were split. While WCW may have put on a more exciting showcase for their last match, the main event itself was hurt because of the finish. Bret Hart and Isaac Yankum didn't exactly set the world on fire but it was a solid televised cage match. We had a little fun with Jerry Lawler and the finish was decisive. This means Nitro wins once again with 4 points. Our overall scores on reliving the war then are as follows. We've got 1 point for Raw. 4 points for Nitro and we also have one tie. In the television ratings, Raw defeated Nitro this week, scoring a 2.6 while WCW managed a 2.2. Thanks for joining me in Reliving the War and I'll see you next time.